Hey, welcome to today's episode of Content Creation Made Easy. All month, I have been talking about how to do marketing that feels more human to us, that feels more authentic to us, that feels more like us. And I want to bring on one of my friends, colleagues, and former client, Teddy Hicks, who is a food and body love coach. Now, I've had Teddy on talking about stuff before, and she and I talk all the time. We actually talk almost every other week, I think, right, Teddy? About, you know, just life and stuff, life and business and all of the things. And when she said something to me recently about the way that she grew up and the messages that she got about showing up and what it meant for her to show up and how she was supposed to show up versus what it looks like in the real online world. I was like, oh, we need to talk about this. So Teddy, thanks for talking to me today. It was like an epic battle for us to get this <laughs> scheduled. So tell, let's, let's just start by telling people who you are and what you do. And then I would love for you to tell your story about this whole thing about showing up authentically. Okay. Um, well, like you said, I'm a food and body love coach. So I started as an intuitive eating counselor um, after having my own journey of recovery from an eating disorder and really just got really passionate about wanting to help other people kind of get away from dieting, learn to love themselves, make peace with food, that whole thing. Cause so many women struggle with that and it's just an ongoing battle. Um, so I, I have an online membership where I kind of, I, my, my goal is to make it as easy as possible because when I went through my own therapy, I, it was like six months of every night, you know, hours of meetings. So my, my goal all along has been just to make this process of making peace with food and not dieting anymore and learning to accept yourself, feel easy and, and, you know, make consistent progress with it. So, um, I use a lot of, you know, mindset and energetic techniques in my business, tapping, Reiki, meditation, all that kind of stuff, hypnosis. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, I, I feel like I've gotten a really good handle on how to kind of reprogram when you have these limiting beliefs that are keeping you from showing up in your business, you know, how to reprogram those beliefs and, you know, really do the things that you want to do in your life. So, yeah, you do a great job and you do make it really easy. And I've done a lot of work with you and come a long way in terms of how I view myself and stop fighting with food and stop dieting, dieting culture. I've learned so much. And I also know that no matter how much you do this work, there's still all of these old stories from maybe it's your parents or your friends or your or society or whatever it is about how you should look, which I think holds us back from marketing ourselves in an authentic way. Yeah. And even if it's not necessarily the way you look, that's holding you back. I mean, you can just have this whole set of beliefs about not being smart enough, not being educated enough, not having enough certifications, not being the professional, you know, who knows everything and can answer every single question immediately. Um, Right. And I think the, the point is for me, no matter what it is, no matter what that thing is, that's holding you back from showing up like super authentically and really being yourself, you can fix it. It doesn't have to just be this limitation that is you constantly, like a hurdle you have to jump over every single time you decide to show up online or want to post some content or do anything like that. So um, you want me to tell you kind of a, my story and how I got I, to this? Place? I totally do. But I want to just pick out something that you said. You said you can fix it. But what I know about you is fixing it doesn't mean looking like everybody else. It doesn't mean having to get that certification. It doesn't mean going from a size 14 to a size 10 or a size four or a size zero, like fixing it does not mean getting in line to do what everybody else is doing. Exactly. And I can't wait for you to talk about like what fixing it actually really means. Yeah. I mean, in my mind, fixing it is, is changing that belief that, cause it's just an idea, right? It's an idea that you have to do X, Y, and Z in order to be successful or that you can't show up for certain reasons and fixing it in my mind means reprogramming that idea so that you, you can, regardless of whatever, like a uh, hurdle you think you have to jump over, you can still show up and be yourself and know that that's okay. It's okay to just be however you are in this moment. You know? Yeah. I really wanted to make that clear to people because we're not talking about looking like everybody else, being like everybody else. We're actually talking about stepping into who you are, more of that. Yes. Right. So, you know, my clients come to me and they have this idea. um, I'm fat. I, you know, I don't look right. My body is not acceptable. And so it's not okay. I don't have permission. I'm not allowed to have all the money I want, show up online. You know, nobody will love me. I, you know, just all this stuff. And so fixing it means getting to the point where you know that you're, you love yourself regardless of the shape that your body happens to be taking today. And you can show up and do what you want to do, even though you're not, you know, whatever idea you have about what it means to be perfect or successful. 
Right. right. So can we hear your story? Sure. Um, so I, I am a classic, like grew up like a little bit chubby, you know, and my family was not okay with that, you know, and I just, from a very early age, got consistent messages about not being okay, about needing to change. Mm -hmm. And it was such a normal part of my life that I didn't even like, it just felt like, yeah, you're right. Like there's definitely like, I'm inherently flawed. There's right. something wrong with me. I am not allowed to be myself because my body doesn't look the way you think it should. I mean, like you drank the Kool-Aid. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent because you get it. I mean, it started when I was like three, you know, so you grow up thinking a certain set of beliefs about yourself. And then all of a sudden you get to be an adult and you're like, wait a minute, I can't, I, so I can't do anything until I can get my body under control or until I look the way people think I should look, but I can't do that either because dieting doesn't work and my body isn't supposed to be that size or look that way. And so I'm stuck. Right. And so you're facing this critical point. This is what happened to me where I just thought like, I don't know what the answer is to this problem, but I know I cannot do this to myself anymore. I cannot continue yeah. to abuse myself, starve myself, hate myself and try to get to, I'm never going to be happy, you know, coming at it from, from that angle. So, um, I ended up going into treatment for binge eating disorder. And that was like the, the culminating event in like my whole life of eating disorders. I had, I run the whole gamut, you know, um, and I don't know if that was exactly what I needed, but it was the thing that kind of got me to go, okay, it's okay for you to be how you are. You know, I was in a group with a bunch of other women who were all different sizes and shapes and all struggling with the same stuff. And it was the first time I was allowed to really go, you know what, there's nothing wrong with you. The, the, you know, the, these messages that you got your whole life about needing to look different, needing to be different was BS, you know, and you, it's okay for you to live your life the way that you are right now. So it really started this journey of me, like really wanting to dig deep into the idea of just accepting yourself no matter what. And, you know, a lot of that means just making peace with the things in your life, like not battling food anymore, not battling yourself anymore, just waking up every day and going, you know what, this is who I am. And it's okay for me to be this way. And it's okay for me to speak and be seen in this body. And that, I mean, it's a huge challenge, you know, but, but I think the key point is seeing that set of beliefs for what it is, which is just ideas that you've been given that you chose to continue thinking, right? Yeah. So the idea that my body was not acceptable was just a thought that I kept thinking until I started to believe it myself. And when you, when you can identify the limitation for what it is, then you, then there's work to do around it, right? Then you can go, okay, what am I going to do with this? I'm going to, I want to change this. How do I do that? Right. And so for me, that looked a lot like daily reminders, which I use in the form of affirmations, just like every day, deliberately thinking different thoughts than the ones that I've been thinking. And then I do a lot of mindset work with tapping. And that's mm -hmm. the kind of stuff where you can just vent out the uncomfortable stuff and kind of absorb a new way of thinking. And then the, the deep subconscious reprogramming that I do with, you know, the guided meditation and the hypnosis. Right. And I think those three things have been a total game changer for me. And you can use it with anything. It's not just about body image, you know, whatever limiting belief you have, you can work on it. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I know that yeah. you know this, you can do the yeah. work and really fix it and change it. So I want to just talk about the fact that all of this sounds kind of hard. And I, I remember listening to you before I even became a client of yours. Um, I'm like that, wait, what? I'm just, what? I'm just supposed to like accept myself like but that goes against everything I've ever done because I'm no 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 I'm supposed to beat myself up and look like everybody else and sound like everybody else and do all the right things that sounds too hard and you and I have had many many conversations about the times we've lost weight in our lives mm -hmm. and yep. like successfully so and you feel good in those moments and then you're just like the whole day then comes about the fear of am I going to eat something that's going to put the weight on? And like you, you're, you're obsessed in a different way, right? Like you're obsessed before you were obsessed with beating yourself up to get it off, and now you're obsessed with making sure it doesn't change because if yeah. it changes, then you're a failure. Like all of this stuff, yeah. and this is the kind of stuff that takes up our brain space. And you and I have also had many conversations about what the hell could we have accomplished already in our lives if our energy wasn't spent on this kind of garbage? Oh my right? God. I know. I, I remember driving in my car one day, to, I was driving to work and I, I just had this like epiphany. I was like, holy shit, I have wasted so much of my time and energy, energy. Yes. just trying to be skinny when I could have, I literally like changed my college major and like did all kinds of stuff just because I was so insecure about my body. And yeah. 
what, like, what could I have, where could I be right now if I had just done the things that I wanted to do without thinking, oh God, you can't do any of that until you're skinny. I mean, that was like right. a rule for me, you know? Right. Yeah. And, um, there, this is such a huge conversation in the online space because there are so many gurus out there who look a certain way. It's usually white women. Here, and here we are two white women having this conversation, right? Like we, I, I feel like if we had a woman of color on this conversation, there would be even more depth to it because this is, you know, you have two daughters who are black and I'm sure that they, you know, you guys have these rich conversations about what is it to, to, to love yourself and be yourself in this society. And so many people online look a certain way to the point where they're like, this is the way you launch. This is the way you market. This is the way you create a course. And I mean, people have been sopping it up with a biscuit for a long time, but I'm wanting to have these conversations about how to make marketing more human because there is no one right way. Right, exactly. And I think, and I think, I mean, we all know this, like intellectually, but to really get this on a deep level, showing up as yourself, like really being authentic and being unapologetic for who you are, just like right now, without needing yes. to change anything, is what makes people, uh, you know, be attracted to you. That is what how you pull in your ideal clients and the people yeah. who really resonate with you and go, you know what, I love the fact that you're showing up and you're fat and you're not, you know, trying to change who you are and you're not wearing like a white suit in a in a perfect <laughs> studio, you know, with this like picture and. Just, you know, just really being yourself and knowing this is who I am and I have something to help people with and I have something important to share and I'm not, I have nothing to apologize for. But you know, the, like it's okay for me to exist in the world like this and it's okay for you to exist in the world like this. You know, you're really showing that. I know that we're saying words right now and I know that to you and me, they mean a lot, but to people who have not done this work yet, it's very confusing to make it all come together and so can you talk a little bit about the journey of going through this stuff and like what, it, like what it honestly takes to step into yourself and be authentically yourself, even if you don't look like, sound like, you don't have the same clothes as, all of those things. What, what yeah. is the journey really like? What it looked like for me was just doing the really scary stuff mm -hmm. consistently over and over again. And I mean, it can be as small as this is something I always talk to my clients about. And I really harp on in my membership that if you hate the way you look in pictures, I mean, that's a really good starting point, right? It, like, it okay, is. It's so great. Yeah. Yeah. I can't show up online because look at me, like I'm hideous. And obviously I can't like be in videos or do whatever. I love that you said that because that's what we think. Yes, of course. I mean, that's what everybody thinks. That's what I thought. Take a million pictures of yourself and continue looking at them over and over again, you know? And, and I used to make videos I, I knew that I needed videos for my business. Like, obviously that was, that's the structure of my membership is a lot of videos, yeah. but I hated doing them. I hated looking at myself. So I just like, I was like, you know what? I'm recording a video every single day, even if it's just me and myself and I in a Zoom meeting, you know, and watching it and just looking at the way that I, my face, the shapes that my face makes when I talk and, you know, the way my voice sounds and just, it, it really is just like exposure therapy. You know, you have to get used to the way you look, you have to get used to the way you sound and know that it's okay for you to be that way. Like it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to look like everyone else. That is the people are going to look at you being real and go, you know what? I love her and I want to work with her. And that's how you get the right people, you know? Yes, I do know. And this desensitization of looking at yourself over and over, listening to yourself over and over. It's, it's kind of like when people come to me and they're like, I want to write better content. I want to create better content. Great. What are you currently doing? Oh, nothing. I, I can't put anything out there. I'm like, how do you think you're going to get better if you don't get stuff out there? If you don't practice, yeah. the only way to get better is by doing it. And this work is really that. Yep. One of the first challenges I had actually from Patty Lennon, she said, go live on your Facebook page every day for 30 days. And when she said that to me, I was like, are you joking? <laughs> I don't even have anything to say every day for 30 days, you know, but I did it. I just, even if it was just like, Hey, I don't know what I'm saying today, but I'm here. Cause I said, I was going to do this. I got, it was such a good experience for me just to get used to looking at myself on video to showing up live every day and being like, you know what? I don't have to be perfect. I don't have to have all the words and all the answers to everything. I'm just, I'm here and you, can get to know me and that's good enough some days, you know, it doesn't always have to be yeah. like a big thing. I also want to talk about um, an aspect of being authentic because authenticity, I think has kind of gotten a bad rap because there are people out there who are quote unquote being authentic and it feels either bullshitty or um, it feels like they're having a meltdown on camera. And <laughs> that's like, we're not talking about being a hot mess and bleeding out on the internet when we're talking about this stuff. 
Yeah. Yeah. Being authentic doesn't mean like sitting around and complaining about how shitty your life is all the time. <laughs> and like, you know, right. I mean, it's, it's a hard line to walk. You know, obviously you want to show up like some days I'm just like, yeah, I don't have it today, but you know, maybe that's the day I don't do anything. I don't post anything. Mm-hmm. So I'm not like in the right, I don't want my clients to see me like, you know, struggling and, and looking awful. But at the same time, I can make a post that says like, Hey, I'm not having the greatest week. I'm really struggling with this or that. And I'm still okay. I'm still here. I'm still doing the work. Yeah. And, it, and it's okay if you feel this way too, you know, that's really the message. Like you don't always have to yeah. feel great and be perfect either. You know, we're all, yeah. You and I actually had a conversation. Remember I called you up that Friday night and I was so enraged about this thing about authenticity that I was seeing online. And, um, the, I had listened to a podcast from Amy Porterfield and it was, a, it was a podcast where she was really being authentic and vulnerable. And I'm all for that more of that, please. But the tone of it was, I'm so embarrassed to tell you this. I'm so embarrassed to tell you this. And I'm so embarrassed to tell you this, that when I was reading it, I felt like I had to, I wanted to give Amy a hug and say, it's okay. Like you're just as human as the rest of us. And I felt like I had to take care of her. And I think that's the difference because what you just said is like, I'm having a crappy day or crappy week or whatever. And and I'm okay. I just wanted you to know it's very normal to have a crappy week Mm. and showing up authentically means we're telling the truth, but without bleeding all over the internet or making our audience feel sorry for us or not yeah. trust us. Yeah. And I think the other thing about that Amy Porterfield thing that really bothered you was like, oh, I'm so embarrassed to be experiencing these things that every normal person experiences all the time. Yeah. Like we, yeah. it's, there's nothing to be ashamed about. We all have crappy days. We all have crappy weeks and that's fine. You know, and sometimes I'm able to show up and be my best self. And I'm like, oh, I nailed that. And then some days I'm like, you know what? that's, I don't have it today. And that's okay. Like it's yeah. just human. When our leaders are able to like say things for us and mirror to us, I think it's very powerful. And what I was so angry about, about that was if, if she's feeling, cause there were the three things that she was upset about were real and I got them and I would have felt the same way. Right. But she was like, I'm so embarrassed that I had this experience. And it made me feel like, what if I struggled with that? Should I be shameful that I had that experience? So what you did recently in your group, I loved because you said, you know, sometimes I look at a picture of myself or I see a video of myself dancing and I hate the way I look. And this is what I do when that happens. And this is how I maneuver through it. And I loved it because it was kind of a one-two punch. It was like, hey, I'm not over here saying I'm fat and I love it all the time. And she, you say like, I still have diet thoughts. I still have negative thoughts. And here's how I'm working through it. And to me, that is the epitome of authenticity yeah yeah it's I mean the point is not to show up every day and be like I'm the best I love myself so much everything about me is perfect I there's nothing I would change I mean that nobody is ever going to get to that point and I think but I think subconsciously that's kind of a goal for a lot of women you know like thinking you can't be who you want to be until you've solved all of your problems you know and and you're right um, so my, my whole jam is like, you know what, you're never gonna, you might not ever look in the mirror and be like, oh my God, I love my body. Like I, I'm so happy I look this way. You know, I, I don't like being this fat and I'm, I'm really open about that. And I'm still going to live my life. I'm still going to do the things that I want to do, you know? So just to not let those like flaws hold you back and, and yeah. silence you, you know, because you've got stuff to do. And it's so much better to live with those bumps than it is to live literally fighting against food every single day and waking up hating myself every single day and going to the closet and hating myself every single day. It's like, it's, it's not like, Oh, it's, it's like, I, it's not like I'm in Nirvana. I'm not, you know, a hundred percent loving myself all the time, but I am loving myself so much more than I ever did when I was fighting against who I really am. Right. And you're not letting it hold you back from doing the things you want to do. You're not, you don't, you're, you've, you're challenging that thought. You might still have it, but you're challenging that thought that tells you, you really can't show up. You really can't make the money you want to make. You can't do the things that you want to do because you're not super, super happy with the way you look. You know, I mean, that's, yeah, it's like what you just said reminded me, I think the thoughts are still there, but they're not running the show anymore. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And that to me is when you can talk about that, that's for example, this month, uh, my whole theme is how to do marketing more, humanely for yourself because frankly like even I as a content creator I love creating content and I know you do too like sometimes I'm tired sometimes I need a break and I took the whole summer off from creating and you know if I did if I was just like cheering people on all the time go, go it, how unfreaking realistic is that right. 
Yeah. Nobody has that level of, of oh. energy, you know, and that no. and you do a great job of showing people how to repurpose content too. So oh, yeah. that like, when you're having one of those weeks, you don't have to come up with like, I really was stuck in this place for a long time of thinking like, I always have to be creating like brilliant, insightful things to, to share with my <laughs> audience. And, you know, there's just sometimes you, I mean, some days that feels easy and some days that feels absolutely impossible and that's okay. You know, that was my, that was a journey too, to get to that point where you go like, yep, yeah, I'm not having one of the greatest days. I'm just going to find an old blog post that I liked and share that again. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's normal to have the ups and downs and nobody, if you, if you think you have to get to that point where you're perfect and you're going to always say the exact right thing and look perfect on camera, it's just going to hold you back. I mean, you're, it's a you're lie not, you cannot possibly live up to. It's um, so one of the things we really wanted to talk about in this conversation is how are you supposed, everybody tells you create a platform. You can create your own channel. You can create your own TV show if you want. Um, But how do you do that? If your whole life you have been told over and over again, you're not good enough. You don't look like everybody else. Nobody wants to look at you. Nobody wants to hear you. Please be quiet. You're too much. You're too extra. Shut up. We're yeah. tired of your, I got, I got told all the time. We're just so tired of all your opinions, Jenny. <laughs> I have so many opinions. I, it's funny that I, I had forgotten to mention that, but that was a big part of my story growing up too, was just like, no one has time for you right now. I mean, it wasn't like overt, but it was just like, we're busy. The adults are busy doing things like just go sit over there, you know? And so it's hard to be like, yeah, anybody wants to hear what I have to say. I, like, why is anybody listening to me? I'm the one I'm supposed to be quiet. I'm and, supposed you know, to be quiet. Right. Or yes. I'd come into the room and somebody would go, well, my, like kind of roll her eyes and go, what do you want now? Like, oh, what do you want now? <laughs> exactly. How are you supposed to show up online? Exactly. I mean, it can, all of it contributes to not only like the way we look and the way we sound and all the beliefs we have, but then like you've been told over and over, like, Shh. yeah, yeah. But now create your own channel and market yourself. Oh, right. okay. No, no, get online and talk all the time about whatever you feel like talking about. And yeah, but it is hard. I mean, it's a journey. Like it, it's, it's baby steps. You know, I didn't, I didn't just show up one day and start like doing lives and making videos and talking on my podcasts and feel great about that. You know, like my friend, I can remember the first YouTube video I made. It's still on my YouTube channel, but I, I spent like two hours doing my hair and made sure like, oh my God, the camera was perfect. And like everything was exactly right. And it's, it's lame. I mean, the video is just like, I'm so stiff and I'm like, you know, like scared to death. So I had to do a lot of that crap before you get to the point where you feel comfortable with it. You know, it's just like, keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing yeah, it. That's to such good it advice. Off, you know? The other piece of advice I would add in is to do it, um, to do the thing, whatever the thing is for you at this point, to, to take some low level risks, yeah. pluck off the low hanging fruit, you know, um, and maybe for marketing, find the right channel for you, the right yeah. platform for you that feels good. And maybe it's just email. Maybe you like feel really safe sending an email or maybe you feel really safe being like a podcast guest on other people's shows, but, like do it in a way that until you get your muscles, I think. Yeah. I will, I will say that I definitely agree with that. I think um, I don't do a whole lot on YouTube anymore. I park my videos there for my membership, but yeah, I think like Facebook, I feel very comfortable on Facebook. I have a community that I know is supportive. And so I'm on Facebook all the time. I, I hate Instagram. I just don't, I don't want to do it. And it's okay. Like for a long time, I was stuck in that place too. Oh my God, I have to be doing yes, Instagram. Right? Like I remember that. that. But I'm just, no, like I, I like Facebook and I like being on Facebook. So I'm going to, I'm going to do that. You know, just pick the thing that feels comfortable for you and works for you and, and do as much of that as you can until you do really more can. of that thing. Yeah. The other thing I'm sure you've noticed is when you start having the conversations that you want to have, and you want to start showing up the way you want to show up, mm-hmm. you start to look around. It's almost like you look, first of all, the first thing you kind of do is, is get outside of your own brain right? Because when we're living in that anxiety, we're so self-focused. So it's almost like we, we pick our noses up and we see like, oh, look, there's other people having conversations about body love and body acceptance and self-love and self-care. And look, not everybody looks like a size two blonde white woman out in this space. And all of a sudden you start to see like, oh, there are my people out there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you do become a magnet for you, you are magnetized and you have people magnetized to you that are aligned with, with the things that you're talking about. And, and you can think, God, there's somebody who needs to hear me today, right? Like I, this isn't all about me. Stop being so fucking selfish. Like somebody, there is a woman out there who is 
way more insecure than I am, who really needs help with the thing that I can help them with and who needs to hear me talk today. So get over yourself, <laughs> get, just it's hit true, play true. on the video and just do it because you, you know, you have a message to share and that's way more important than whether your hair is perfect or, you know, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Else. Yeah. If you're, um, you just said something that I, that I want to leave people with, which is remembering that there's somebody out there who has never heard this message before or never been able to hear it and absorb it in the way you have to share it. Yeah. So if you always are talking kind of too far down the line for your people, and you're always assuming nobody needs those really foundational messages, you're missing out on attracting those people. Yeah. So going back to those, you know, I remember when I first heard about this health at every size, it felt like nonsense. Like that's ridiculous. Ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah. I, I, I had a perfect example of that a couple of months ago, I sent out an email to my list. I do like a body image tip every Tuesday. So I send out an email every Tuesday with just like a random thing. And I sent one out. I don't remember exactly what it was, but I thought, oh, this is so basic. Like everybody's going to be rolling their eyes at this. Like, oh, everybody knows this. And I got like three replies that were like mind blown. Like I never thought about it that way. You know, so it's so important to remember, like, even though you're the expert at something, people don't know nearly, you know, they, you always have to come back to basics and like yeah. review the foundational stuff that it's so don't... true. Yeah. That's why you're every time that. I want to teach something that I'm like, they're going to roll their eyes at this. It's always, right. yep. Oh, thank you for having this conversation with me today. I really appreciate yeah, no it. No tell problem. me, how, tell everybody how they can follow you online, listen to your podcast and talk about your membership. Okay. So, um, well, the, the kind of starting point for everything is my website, food and body love.com all spelled mm -hmm. out. Um, and I have, I, I'm most active in my Facebook group, which is called the Body Positive Club with Teddy Hicks. So that's the two main ways to kind of find me. You can subscribe to my podcast from the website Perfect. and sign up for my daily affirmations, which I think are um, really great and learn more mm -hmm. about my membership on there too. Yeah. And I will say Teddy's stuff is so accessible, relatable, realistic. And I mean, as you can tell just from listening to her, she's not, she's no bullshit. She's really just putting it all out there and has helped me personally a lot. So thank you so much. Yeah. You've helped me a lot too, Jen. I'm, we have a very like symbiotic relationship. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you well, for having me. Anybody who listened, whether you're listening on the replay or you're listening on the podcast, um, I really hope there's something you can take away from our conversation and remember like the journey is long and it's not easy, but honestly, on the other side of the work that you're doing, it's so much easier than the place you're sitting right now, which is beating yourself up and not showing up and not creating the business that you really want. So I just hope we encourage you to do that. Thanks, Teddy. Thank you. Bye everyone.